Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Well, that, that so we we we. <laughs> I feel like we're barely getting started here. Uh, we're in Genesis 1 and 2, but we're looking at the things that get in the way. Obviously, after Genesis 1 and 2, you've got the fall of mm-hmm. Genesis 3 and what gums up the works, and we've been talking about that a little bit. But part of what we're driving towards is creating an environment. I mean, I mean, the responses to sexuality are set up by how you build the relationships before you even get to sexuality, if I can say it that way. And I think that's part of what we're talking about mm-hmm. here. When we're talking about how the impact of families and how people are raised right. mm-hmm. help to help them to form how they're interacting and view uh, other people in general and the other gender in particular. All those things feed into where you end up once once, once the switches flip mm-hmm. and you, and, right. and and you're there. Um, and so I don't. Th- I think it's 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 smart to think about that because sometimes we just ignore it, which means that we. Oftentimes are are plopped into, if I can say it that way, not a very elegant metaphor, mm-hmm. but we're plopped into situations that that have been long time in development. Oh yeah, um, and uh, so so what what advice? Uh, you know, let me let me read the list of the types of things we're going to cover at the conference. We're going to deal with, and, and it, it literally is a, a a potpourri of stuff. Um, uh, we've got. Human sexual trafficking on one level, which is a whole different way of handling people uh, in, as commodities when it comes to sexuality. Uh, domestic sexual abuse, which is um, probably a, a topic that isn't sufficiently appreciated for mm. the, for it not only its presence but then prevalence. Prevalence, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, we've put together pornography and marital unfaithfulness in the same track because because we think those are, are related. Then we've got another track that's going to be same-sex attraction and orientation and gender identity issues. That That's going to have its own particular conversations because the issue of how to even talk about um, same-sex relationships, the way in which identity takes place, the issue of choice versus nature, all those kinds of mm-hmm. questions are going to lay in mm-hmm. there. Uh, the fourth track is is the hookup generation and cohabitation, just that whole – just the whole environment, particularly that, that college kids and singles oftentimes actually find themselves in, in our society at large. And then the fifth track, which we had linked to something else, but we've decided to pull it out and make it separate, is sex abuse in the church. How does the church manage uh, or attempt to manage situations that pop up and then what happens should something happen and and how do you cope with those situations? There's the there are two sides to this equation. There's setting up the way the whole program is structured so that you protect kids, but mm-hmm. should it not work, then what right. do you deal with on the fallout on the other right. end, both of which are important questions. So that's the scope of what we're dealing with. Um, what an awesome idea, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're getting, this is wonderful that the church is going to be able to be served. By well, you know what's interesting topics. is as I thought about this in relationship to the center and what the center's been trying to do. Normally, when we do. Uh, discussions on sexuality, we hold out the ideal and we're trying to drive people to what they should be moving towards, kind of like how we began. But the reality is, as I said, is is that we've got people who are plopped down in the middle of real-life right. situations, and if all you do is talk about the positive and you don't talk about how to minister to people where they are finding themselves and mm-hmm. where they've landed, you really haven't equipped yourself to minister in this area. Right. right. So. And if we go back years and years ago when the church hardly talked about sex, right? you know, that it, it couldn't even address or approach any of the wounds created by this because we can't, we can't talk about sex. I so can't, certainly we can't, can't it, talk about sexual woundedness. In all honesty, and I may get my hand slapped for saying this, I can't imagine thinking about doing this conference 40 years ago mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't imagine the topic would even be broached. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so but kudos and to the And if DTS it was, it. I'd have a hard time imagining anybody coming. Right. That's an interesting <laughs> idea. And if it was, 
what kind of um, level of expertise could you gather and that's around another, the topic? Okay, right. another factor. So, as well. I mean, so I mean, there, but we're, we're not here to to, <laughs> to beat on the past. But uh, but I really do think this is a, a unusual opportunity for church yes. communities to gather again and see the scope of what we're dealing with. The mm. the 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 um, temptation here in dealing with this topic was to do with one, only one or two of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason we didn't go there, uh, even though it would have been much more cost effective, yeah. et cetera, <laughs> easier. <laughs> easier, that's right, was we wanted to actually impact people with the scope of what it is that we're mm -hmm. actually talking about here in the variety of things, because it, it's entirely conceivable that when you put the whole thing out here and you talk about where individual people are, they may be falling into four or five of these areas uh, yeah. at once. Yes. As opposed to having deal with, so right. if you only deal with one, you've actually only dealt with a part of what's going on. Yeah, and it, it's a, a great way to not only help equip the church, but it's it's about validating those who are seeing their issue being addressed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not just an issue of somebody else. Right, where it's broadly trying to touch all of the different Yeah, areas. and I think the hard thing here is is that another aspect that makes this a challenge is I think in ministering to this area, because you're dealing with so many levels, you know, we've talked about single people, we've talked about parents, we've talked about kids, you're actually challenging the church at, at a variety of ministry levels simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It isn't a case of mm -hmm. this is a senior pastor issue or this is a youth pastor issue or this right. is a college career minister's area. The, if the church is really going to think about this area, their staff as a team needs to think about how to minister and, 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 and view this area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you know, I'm just thinking of working with families that I work with several families who the struggle there's somebody in the family struggles with same sex attraction. Mm -hmm. And so in some of the families I work with it is the children mm -hmm. or, or one of the children, but in some of the families I work with it's one of the parents. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah, who do you send that to? It's not just to the youth pastor or to the the marriage pastor. We, we need to be tending to uh, these issues as family issues because they marital unfaithfulness it impacts the whole family. Yeah, I'm you know, very, pornography, very I'm very familiar family. with a situation in which a, a wife has left a husband having declared herself to be a lesbian. They've been married for over 30 years. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and and so the the debris if mm -hmm. you say, is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's not just the husband, it's the kids. Yep. Uh, and and um, I don't remember if this particular family has grandkids yet or not, but it's – I mean, it, they were on the edge of it, if right. not. And so, um, again, it's um, – you know, we, we, we tend to think about it going perhaps in one direction, but it often is uh, quite a mix that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so the hope has, it has been that by dealing with the scope of what we're facing here, uh, that people get a sense at, at really how many different – Areas this deals with, and uh, the uh, our, our hope is is that it, the churches that decide to to come to this, or the or even the lay leadership that decides to participate in it, elders levels and that kind of thing, people are interested in it. That it won't just be one person from a church who shows up, but that really a, a staff thinks about uh, tackling this and going after it and, and wrestling with. If we were to get intentional about how to think about ministry in these areas, um, what would that what yeah. would that look like? I'm just so glad that you're stepping up and DTS is behind this. Because uh, I know recently I've been in several different churches where there's been a special topic around sexuality, one or another, mm -hmm. maybe multiples, and it's where the church is kind of risked mm -hmm. saying, okay, we're going to have this be an open conversation mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And it's like people are finally saying, oh my, I'm just so glad this is something we can talk about now. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's 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 been a need, and now we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, it it just seems to be so well received by the congregation members. Mm -hmm. Once the church does step up and gets behind it and says, "We know this is where you're living, and we want to minister to you where you're living." Mm -hmm. 
Now, uh, uh, we aren't going to be able to obviously do this in the time that's left because our time is slipping away from us, but I, I'd like to take a shot at kind of getting the ball rolling here. Let's assume, let's assume the best. I've got a church, they're coming, you know, they're planning on coming to the conference and they're planning about thinking about addressing these areas and, and thinking structurally as a church about how to address these areas. What kinds of, of gener generic advice or general advice would you give them as they move into an area? And mm -hmm. I suspect there would be a little bit of nervousness about yeah. mm -hmm. this. Um, mm -hmm. you know, right, right. You aren't just going to dive in. That's and go, a great question. Yeah. That's a so. Question. I would say the first important thing for a church is to really think about this as a process. Mm -hmm. Don't think about this as you come to the conference, mm -hmm. you get a program in a box, and then you take it back to yeah, your church. Yeah, that's not happening. I can tell you that from the planning standpoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even if you did try to deliver that, that would be a, a big problem. Uh -huh. see? So, but think about it as a process, and in the first early step in the process, is just an opening conversation and making room for understanding mm -hmm. and, and, and to provide a hearing and to say, you know, help us to learn as shepherds, mm -hmm. you know, the needs of the sheep. And, but also, we do have that theologian word, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's good through all times, mm -hmm. through, uh, through all decades. And so we want to be faithful with the eternal Word of God to be relevant to where you are today mm -hmm. in this. And so uh, I, I think this is really best thought of as this process approach, and this is in the early stage of the process. This is the big goal is just understanding. Let's grow in understanding on both sides what the needs are and what the eternal truths are and how we can grow these things together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get the conversation going, and and I think one of the ways of getting the conversation going is to invite uh, questions mm -hmm. to help know where the congregation is mm -hmm. and uh, where I attend. And we weren't members there when the pastor did this, but it's one of the things I thought this is going to be a, a really open church. Uh, he was going to do a a, a passage on on just sexuality mm -hmm. and intimacy mm -hmm. and God's design, and so he they opened up, set it up that. Um, you could go online mm -hmm. and ask any question about sexuality and singleness or marriage, mm -hmm. put whether you were single, uh, female or male, and, and around what age, and uh, then everything else, you know, uh, anonymous. But that gave them an idea of really where the church was they and what they were feedback. curious about yeah. and, and what questions they had and, and where what they were needing. Mm -hmm. And it's been just really uh, neat to see then as that church has grown and as the pastors come back and been willing to uh, touch on topics mm -hmm. on, on weekends or have special extended um, uh, training in the afternoons over certain hmm. uh, topics and then knowing what kind of programs they want to develop. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that was a great way of inviting the dialogue to take place. Not hmm. just we want to talk to you and teach, but we want to know what you're we interested get, in we talking hear, about. We got to do some listening to start. Yeah, it's it not very different than evangelism in some ways, hmm. where, where I tell people that one of the mistakes Christians make in evangelism is they want to dump the message on the person mm -hmm. before they really know where the person is. Mm -hmm. Don't know their story. Yeah, exactly. Don't know their story, and so there's a lot of listening that needs to right. happen. Good evangelism, so that so that you can begin to know how to how to engage with where the person's actually coming right, from right. and face what mm -hmm. they're actually asking about those kinds of things. So so you start off with a you understand that it's a process. You create uh, what I hear you describing is creating an environment in which. Questions can be, and I, I think this is one of the challenges churches face. How in the world can we do this? And I'm going to use a word; it may not be the best word. How in the world can we do this safely? How in the world can we do this in a way that a, that, that the person will come forward, and they will come forward because they won't feel they're at risk, right? Mm -hmm. um, if right. they come forward. Well, the second uh, step in the process, I would say, is an education step. So we mm -hmm. got the dialogue, mm -hmm. we there got go. the education, uh -huh. and so um, there's a lot that we know now that we didn't used to know mm -hmm. just from good research, discovered mm -hmm. truths. And, mm -hmm. and so it's taking the eternal Word of God mm -hmm. along with these new discovered truths mm -hmm. and just raising our awareness, educating, mm -hmm. you know, helping us to understand that, oh, these are things 
that we now can say are predictive of these outcomes. Mm -hmm. See, uh, and these are things that we can now say are preventative of these negative mm -hmm. outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, these are our better understandings of the complex and multi-dimensional nature of this problem mm -hmm. now. So we can't have a simplistic approach to mm -hmm. this particular kind of problem. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, that's a very next helpful step in the process, I would say, is an education step. And, okay. I, and I think your conference is going to really leap us ahead mm -hmm. in, in that part of it. So, so we begin a dialogue and a conversation. We begin the process of education, and then uh, you, you, it looks like you're, you got a we process. Got, we got, I feel like I'm being led down a primrose path. I'm here. glad you asked. So, the next step. <laughs> the coaching step. Yeah, okay. and, and so the, uh, the coaching step is actually an equipping step. Uh -huh. it, it's actually helping to bring to bear information into skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. See, And how do I begin to build new patterns mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. that can give me a different outcome mm -hmm. rather than you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Mm -hmm. Interesting. See? And, and that's, again, informed both by the eternal truths of God as well as the discovered truths of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you that one of the reasons you're calling this a process is, is that you, it's really hard to get to the coaching without the conversation and without the education. That right. That's the true. That's for. true. But at the same time, we don't, I don't want to describe it just as a straight line linear process. No, it's process more interactive. Either. It's yes. in dynamic. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I, I get that. But, that. but there are dimensions in play that are all bouncing off of each other as you're Right. As you're flowing mm -hmm. along through the process. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And then I would say that that fourth step that's key is realizing there's also a role for referring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There comes a point where yes. I hit the limit. Uh, you know, yeah. this is, yeah. you know, I can do this much here, but you're going to need this much. Yeah. And so it's about having collaborative working models. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That so, are sharing the same kind of foundation, mm -hmm. so you don't have to be concerned about your referring taking. A different direction. Mm -hmm. Like even approaching this conference, taking that approach, mm -hmm. really the referral may come first from those of us recommending to churches to come to this conference or church staff to come to this conference. So the right. referral really is we're going to send you here. From the and therapist learn how to, to the conference. Right, <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. to learn how to dialogue. Yeah, yeah. And then you're in, in learning how that dialogue, you're going to be introduced to some e education. Mm -hmm. And then some equipping. So really, that that protocol. Mm -hmm. Well, even this is a great setup for starting that protocol. Yeah. And it's in. It's not completely linear. Yeah, and, and actually, that's part of the intent. I mean, the part of the intent of why we've structured this and done this the way we have is to get it out on the table. It, it is to be the first step. It, it's designed to launch the first step of the process, and then leave it uh, in the in the interaction that happens between the people that we bring and the people who attend them to think through. All right, how do I localize this for my particular community, mm -hmm. and how does our staff do this together, and how how, how can we how can we make it work? What mistakes should we avoid in, in, in going there? Because I mean, uh, there's no doubt that when you walk into this area, you're, you you know you are you risk walking into a powder keg. I mean, right. if, if it's poorly managed, and yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, so all that is a part of what we're trying to pull off as we as we work with this. Uh, but you can see that the intent is to walk into the middle. Of of where things are, and, and if I can say it, the, the the mess that people oftentimes have gotten themselves into, mm -hmm. and to see how can we stretch out a hand and, and reach in and, and seek to minister in yeah. those kinds of situations. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we as a church of all uh, people should be fully aware of our brokenness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that I mean, we should not be surprised mm -hmm. by this. Array it's of kind of the com that right. we have. It, 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 it was our entering. It was our what our credentials upon entry, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it reminds me of Ed Bloom's uh, quote uh, uh -huh. going back there. Like even marriage itself is two depraved people struggling together for oneness. Yeah, right. that's because yeah. Ed was such a positive person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I mean, if we're really honest and real about our true nature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we know that there's really not one of us. That's got a higher moral ground over anybody else. That's right. We know it's we all, all about have the grace. same need. We that's all right. have equal need of grace. That's right. 
and we all have brokenness, it's going to show itself in different ways between mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. M my brokenness might not show quite as much on the outward view as somebody else's brokenness, but mm -hmm. I, I don't have less brokenness. Right, right. See, so uh, I think we as the church can just receive that truth and say, okay, that's where we are. Let's work with where we are. Let's move forward with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to close off with the – because our time is up, which is frightening, um, and, and ask one more question. If you were to give one piece of advice to a pastor or someone on a staff in this area as you know, as we're kind of summing this up, and uh, I'm going to let you each have have a shot at one thing. Um, uh, what would you say to the to the pastors in, in, as we as we wrap up? And in the I'm I'm from the south, so mm. so ladies get to go first. Good. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you say that. Thank you, there, Carol. You give you more time to think about it. But anyway, you know. I, because I'm aware, I guess, of, of how much woundedness that's out there and mm -hmm. how much shame, I my message would be encouraging churches to learn how to come alongside and love those uh, on a journey mm -hmm. instead of um, – I, I think we know how to invite the lost in well, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to journey very well with those who fall mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in their Christian walk or those who are really already wounded. And so I think we've got to learn to do that with truth and grace, but not shaming them. You know, as I've asked you this question, questions popped in my head, and it's, it's bugging me so much I'm going to follow it up, and that's this. Um, I suspect that when you walk into this area and you open the door, that it's far more likely – and I may be wrong, but I think it's far more likely that a woman would initially come forward and raise the issue and step into the pastoral care than it would be that a man would. Which, from a staff standpoint of a church, is is already going to introduce a problem because mm -hmm. most of your staff is going to be yeah. predominantly male. Mm -hmm. So how do mm -hmm. you how do you bridge that likely? Uh, you know, you, okay, right, we're going right. to launch in, and here we go, and boom, uh, yeah, yeah. that's the reality we're likely to face. Well, I, I would say that parallels the same with the secular counseling office as well. Mm -hmm. See, it's uh -huh. it's not the guy who calls up asking for marriage counseling. Yeah. See? And so it's not the guy who walks in first right, to the right. office. Yeah, it's, often the, it's often the woman. Yeah. And so thank God that women have a sensitivity for <laughs> what their true needs are, and guys need to learn from that and be responsible. Yeah, the to question them. that I'm asking, though, is from the standpoint of the staff person who's male. Okay? Right. Right, okay. Uh, uh, and, and the likelihood is you're going to have this – if you do this, your influx is primarily going to come from the female population of your church. What kind of advice or wisdom would you give to the pastors about that expectation and that likelihood? Increase your female staff uh, ratio. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. hire, hire female staff, and whether it's counselors on staff or females who are trained in knowing how to mentor and come alongside. Or, or but absolutely. Have, you know, like female therapists who are also serving in their local church to take that serving role yes. in mm -hmm. their church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think that one of the things that becomes sensitive, staff sensitive, to, and this depends obviously on how people view with this, but some churches are nervous about male staff counseling female mm -hmm. members right. for a whole That's series of That's another whole reasons. session we exactly. can Exactly. That would go yeah. <laughs> on that. That uh, would go we on could that. fit that into one of your workshops. <laughs> that, that, se yeah. that sexual <laughs> abuse in the church yeah, one, right. that, exactly. that we could do a whole right. Well, hour see, that. That, I mean, that, uh, 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 well, this is why but we But healthy do. boundaries are all a part of that. We Ex can work with right. that. Exactly right. And, and so and I think getting that out on the table on the front yeah. end, I mean, if you're going to walk into this area, this is one of the things you've got to be ready to think about, it seems to me. We've already established the principle that we raise topics in the midst of our podcast that yeah. <laughs> you're coming back, and, so, and here's what we're going to talk about. Okay, well, uh, Debbie, you've, you've given us something on the table, and then I rudely interrupted you with that question that yeah. uh, popped in my mind, but I thought, man, it's pretty basic. I don't think I can let that one go. Right. Gary, what would you say? Okay, so I, I've had – the first thing that pops into my mind to your question is it makes me think about there's several different pastors in town that I've had the great opportunity to be with and learn from. Mm -hmm. And and what's really striking to me about them is their spirit of teachableness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're they're sensing a need in their church. 
that they didn't feel adequately trained mm-hmm. and equipped for in their mm-hmm. seminary preparation. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're not thinking of themselves as, I have to be the answer man for everything that our church does. Right, See? right. But I can be the lead shepherd. Right. See? I can facilitate. And I can facilitate. Yeah. And, and we, can, mm-hmm. we can meet this need with people besides me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? Mm-hmm. That spirit, that collaborative, cooperative spirit. Mm-hmm is so great for the church mm. when a pastor brings that to mm. the church. And mm. I, I've just seen such wonderful models of it. And, and if you're a pastor and you're wondering which model you're going to grow and build, <laughs> I really encourage you to grow and build this <laughs> that, the teachable, cooperative, collaborative Team model. Work, yeah. <laughs> the last 90 seconds was brought to you by the Society for the Teachableness of Pastors, Gary Barnes, Chairman. Yeah. Treasurer, president, and there's some great <laughs> examples out there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to come in and, and kind of introduce and uh, this topic and kind of get us started. I know we've kind of moved around, and there isn't any rhyme or reason to the conversation that we've had. But I suspect that the kind of uh, how can I say it, the kind of uh, dynamic nature of what we're talking about is actually part of the dynamics of what this kind of a conversation mm-hmm. actually is and becomes. Uh, you don't get your Good hands around it and control right. it. That's right. So uh, so we thank you for, for uh, teaching us words like dialogue and education and coaching and referral. Yes. And, wow, you're uh, a quick well, learner there. Yeah. <laughs> you got that down. Yeah. I got to sleep tonight. And <laughs> those four words ringing in my head. We call it the DECAR model. The DECAR model? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't know whether I'll remember that yeah. or not. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I do want to thank you all for coming in. We thank you for joining us on the table. We do hope that you'll consider coming to the conference that we're holding, uh, yeah. Jerusalem Meets Vegas, and that it's an opportunity for you, your church uh, staff, and your leaders to think through how do we minister to this very um, key segment of what goes on in life in our society around us and uh, how will it uh, help us to be more effective as a church community. Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. For more podcasts like this one, visit dts.edu slash the table. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.